Brian Molko. What did you think of him when you first saw him? What was your first impression? I thought he, yeah, was good. It's very short. He's quite short. Short man, little man. He was wearing a hat, wearing sunnies. <laughs> Sunglasses inside, which is fine if you're in a band. You can get away with it. Yeah, yeah. But um, no, I thought it was good. Like I've seen, like from his old stuff, he looked, he looked like younger than what he looked eight years ago. Right. When like. So every, he's looking good. He's working out. Every you and every me came good out on you, or something. Good on you, Brian. Doing well. <laughs> Here he is now. This is Brian Malko. He, he never goes out with the, without the slap, the makeup on. The slap. Great slap. This is Brian now talking about when gigs don't go so well. For a band, when you're kind of, you know, when you're, the instruments aren't working or, you know, when you have technical problems, you just feel like a, an amputee, you know, on stage. So it's, uh, that, that, that's, you know, one condition that, that, that makes it quite difficult. You know, everybody has a bad day. Everybody wakes up occasionally on the wrong side of the bed and just kind of, you know, or everybody has stuff going on in their life which can kind of influence a bad show sometimes as well. So we're only human, but, you know, the thing about the band is that regardless of all of these factors, you know, we uh, try to pay maximum respect to the people who show up and um, so we do our best to, you know, give 100% whatever the conditions are, you know, but being, being human, you know, there's only, only so much that we can do on certain days. Has it become easier as you've, as you've uh, gotten older and, and you've been around for a, a bit longer to, to separate the stuff? Well, I as, think, as you I said think what you the, do with the show? time is that you learn to sort of become a lot less precious and, mm. you know, you, you kind of understand, um, you know, the context a lot more of, of, of what you're doing. When you're 22, 23, you know, every, every little tiny thing that goes wrong is kind of like a, a matter of life and death to you, you know. I think you sort of get, a, you know, more distance and more balanced from, from the whole thing just through experience. So you're a little bit more kind of less, well, a little less emotional about the whole thing. You know, you understand that, you know. Well, to quote, okay, go, this too shall pass, you know. <laughs> there you go. Deep, man. Deep. <laughs> Have you noticed any of that uh, immaturity, that youthfulness in some of the other sound wave acts in the lineup? Uh, Whippersnappers? Uh, you know, everybody I've seen has been a consummate professional. <laughs> Is that you would have seen answer? some debauchery in your time, Brian. <laughs> I have indeed, yes, yes. And I will take it to the grave. <laughs> You're not going to write a song on your final song on your last album? It's going to be The Things I've Seen as a, as a rock star? No, but have you, do you know that song, The Things I've Seen? You won't believe The Things I've Seen, Way Beyond Your Wildest Dreams. It's a hip-hop track. Oh. You know, check it out. I wrote that. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> Just take the credit, mate. Have you thought about delving into hip-hop at all? No. With a few placebo? Is that too much of a leap? Because you want to reinvent yourself with each album. But well, no, I can't, you know, and rapping's not really my thing, sure. you know. So sort of thing, I think we might come across a little bit too flight of the Concords, really, if we try to hip-hop, <laughs> you know. <laughs> hip-hop eponymous, of course. Yeah. Are you a flight of the Concords fan? Oh, yeah, massive, yeah. Yeah, very much so, yeah. Uh, Comedy-wise or musically as well? Uh, well, you know... In terms of in Flight of the Concords, one goes, you know, they, they go hand in hand, really. You know, the music is comedy and the comedy is music. It's the same thing with the Mighty Boosh, I think, mm. um, which is why I think they're so, so successful and, um, you know, so original as well. And, uh, you know, why the youth of many English-speaking nations have taken to them, you know. Brian, when you were uh, chatting at Soundwave to Zanro uh, from Triple J, you mentioned that it's important to keep the goths tanned. Uh, and getting out into the sun that's, a, that's an important goal of yours I was interested what, what, what it's kind of eradicating third world debt yeah. you know freeing Tibet sure. and uh, I mean, you cold. know making sure that the Australian goss get enough sun cold play those, those are my those are my three main main, main uh, you know reasons for living yeah <laughs> I mean there's Make Property History you two Coldplay Make Trade Fair Whatever. You know, exactly. placebo, yeah. you give know, the goths goth tan. get tanned. <laughs> yeah. Do you consider yourself a goth? Or, or you, you, no, no, no. Do you uh, subscribe to any kind of label in that sense? Or? Oh, I don't know. Um, male, probably. Controversial? Uh, label, I don't know. Uh, I'm not, I, I, the only labels I like are designer ones, really. <laughs> so that is placebo frontman Brian Molko. He's cheeky, isn't he? Yeah. Uh -huh. Bit of an aside there. <laughs> uh, we've got another part of that interview coming up later on in the show.